The Weber Kettle is one of the most versatile, well-rounded, and user-friendly grills I've ever used, but it does take some practice to master using it. Now, in this video, I'm gonna help you conquer one of the toughest things to master, and that's temperature control. And we're gonna do it without the use of any additional tools or gadgets that you have to rush out and buy. Hello and welcome to Grilling and Chilling with Coleman. And unless the real Coleman is still watching TikTok videos in the corner, I'm Coleman. My passion is helping grilling and barbecue enthusiasts become the backyard grill master they've always wanted to be. This video is part two in a series on temperature control. And if you missed part one, where I walk you through my tips and techniques on temperature control for the Kamado Joe, I'll put a video right up here. Now in this week's video, I'm gonna be tackling the challenge of temperature control on one of the most popular grills in the United States, the Weber Kettle. If you just bought your Weber Kettle and you need some help putting that thing together, I also have a video on my channel to help you with that. Let's get it fired up. As I mentioned in my last video, there are three target temperature zones we shoot for when we're grilling and smoking. Now, one of the comments I got a lot in my last video is, Coleman, I can't get my grill to stay right at that target temperature you said in the video. So let me clarify. These are target temperature zones, not exact temperatures. If you can stay within 25 degrees of the temperatures that I recommend up or down, you're good. This is not an exact science. Even my temperatures fluctuate a little bit during my cook. Our three zones that we shoot for are first, low and slow at around 225 to 275. Our second is hot and fast at around 350 to 400. And our last zone is our searing zone, and that's right at 550 plus. Uh, all right, class, time for a short science lesson. Temperature control is all about oxygen levels in your grill. The more oxygen you let the charcoal out, the hotter they're gonna burn. The less oxygen you give them, the cooler they're gonna burn. And, and if you cut off the oxygen completely, they're gonna go out. They're gonna go out. Now, now, now we control the oxygen levels in our grill with the use of the top and the bottom vents. <laughs> All right, who the heck was that? Anyway, a big mistake I made early in my grilling journey was thinking that if my grill was getting too hot, that I needed to open up the lid and let out some of that heat. Well, that's a huge mistake. All that does is flood your grill with more oxygen and it really sends those temperatures soaring. Now that's why it's so important to keep that lid closed, especially when you're smoking low and slow. Another important thing to remember is that with some styles of temperature control that I'm gonna be sharing with you today, the temperature at your grate level could be drastically different than the temperature that your lid thermometer is showing. One of my viewers contacted me recently and said that he watched one of my videos on how to smoke ribs on my gas grill. He followed my steps to the T and his ribs turned out tough and not fall off the bone like I showed in the video. Now, after visiting with him, we determined that the temperature gauge on his grill was 100 degrees different than the actual temperature on the grill grates where his ribs were being smoked. Once we found the issue and fixed the problem, his ribs came out amazing the next time. So what I'm saying is, is it might be a good idea to invest in a temperature probe just like this one. Now this one's about 50 bucks on Amazon and I'll put a link below if you wanna pick one up. Now it has a probe for both the meat and for the grill, plus it's wireless. I know this is a lot of information, but I guarantee you it's gonna be worth it in the end. There's a few other variables that really can affect your temperature during the cook. Things like the seal on your lid, the humidity, the outside temperature, the charcoal that you use, and lastly, how much beer you consume during the cook. Now, these can all cause your temperature to vary a little bit, but at this point, I really wouldn't worry about it. Hitting our three target temperatures on the Weber kettle is mostly about vent settings. Now let me show you a little trick I did with mine to really help with that. I flipped my grill upside down here on the table to really give us a better view. I start with the bottom vent fully closed. Then I move the handle so that the vent is only one quarter open. I then mark the handle location with a Sharpie. Next, I move the handle so the vent is one half open and mark that location. I then move it so the vent is three quarter open and mark the handles location again. And finally, I open the vent all the way and mark that final handle location. 
later I'm gonna take my Dremel tool and etch these marks in permanently. This way my adjustments are always consistent on my grill. Now that we have that all out of the way, the first temperature zone that we're gonna set up our Weber kettle for is for low and slow smoking. And as I mentioned before, that temperature range is between 225 and 275. And I use this zone for smoking things like pork butt and ribs. Now, low and slow is definitely the most popular method for cooking on a Weber kettle. So I'm gonna spend more time on this one. One important tip for hitting this temperature zone is the more charcoal briquettes you initially light, the hotter your grill is gonna get. So only light a few briquettes to start with. Now here's a few ways to set up your grill for this temperature zone. Start off by piling a stack of unlit charcoal in the back of your grill. I like to use about 75 for a six hour cook. Then light about 10 briquettes in your chimney starter. And when they're going well, dump those on the edge of the stack of your unlit charcoal. It will slowly light and burn the stack, giving you a long and slow burn. Then place on a couple chunks of your favorite smoke wood, making sure you place one on top of the lit charcoal. Next, close the lid of your grill. And close the bottom vent to about a quarter open, and the top vent to about a quarter open as well. It should only take about 15 minutes for your grill to come up to 250 degrees and be ready for your meat. Now, if you need to make any other adjustments to raise or lower the temperature, you need to make those minor adjustments with your top vent here. And remember, it takes about 15 minutes for those changes to take effect. It's important that when you put the lid on your Weber kettle that the top vent goes on the opposite side of the grill that you have the lit charcoal on. This way the smoke comes off of that smoke wood, goes over the top of the meat, and then comes out that top vent. Now the bad part about this setup is it puts that lid temperature gauge right over the hot coals, really making it virtually useless. That's why having a backup temperature gauge like the one I mentioned earlier is so important or you can install a second gauge right here in the lid next to the vent, which is really what I plan to do with mine. Now, if your Weber came with a basket just like this one, the setup process is a little different, but it does seem to work a little bit better. First, place the basket in the back of your grill. Pour those 10 lit briquettes in the corner of the basket. Then fill the basket the rest of the way with unlit charcoal. And place your favorite smoke wood on top of the unlit charcoal. Then place that lid on and adjust those vents just like we did on the last method. There's also aftermarket baskets out there on the market, just like this slow and sear here, that I like a whole lot better than the Weber basket that came with my grill. It's a whole lot bigger, more heavy duty, plus it has a water pan built in. And there's a link below if you wanna pick one up. The last method I'm gonna share with you for setting up my grill for low and slow is called the snake method. Now this method seems to work better for really long cooks like briskets or larger pork shoulders. And here's how I set up mine. I start by placing two rings of unlit charcoal around the outer edge of my grill, making sure I leave a gap about eight inches between the ends. Then I stack another two rings on top of the two I just put down. Next, a single ring on top of those two. Then I space out my smoke wood around the outer edge. And finally, I pour about five to seven lit charcoal briquettes onto one end of the snake. Those lit briquettes will light the end of that snake and keep it burning for about eight to 10 hours. Then close the lid and make sure that top vent is opposite of your heat. And then close that bottom vent to about quarter open. And then that top vent to about a quarter open as well. Now, one of these methods should really help you master the low and slow smoking on your Weber kettle, but it's really vital that you keep the lid closed unless you really need to open it. Now, let's move on to setting up our grill for hot and fast grilling. But before we do, if you're enjoying this video and you're getting some value out of it, hit that red subscribe button below and click on that thumbs up. It really helps people find my videos. Hot and fast grilling is the second most popular way you're gonna use your grill. This temperature zone is between 350 and 400 degrees, and I like to use it for things like hot dogs, chicken, or fish. Now, when you set up your grill for this temperature zone, you can do it one of two ways. You can either set it up for your entire grill to be hot and fast, or you can set it up for two zone grilling. The setup will really depend on what you're cooking at the time, and in my videos, I'll specify if you need to set it up for two zone grilling or not. Now, here's how I set up my grill. Start off by opening the bottom vent all the way. Then light a full chimney of charcoal and pour it into your grill. If you want the entire grill to be a hot and fast zone, spread out those briquettes across the bottom of your grill. If you want to set it up for two zone grilling, bank those lit coals to one side of your grill. 
then add your favorite smoke wood. Put the lid on your grill and open up that top vent all the way. After about 15 minutes, your grill should be ready to cook on. And by the way, I just got in a batch of my grilling and chilling stickers and I'd love for you all to have one. Just go on over to my website, the link is down below. Click on the contact us page and send me your address and I'll send one out to you free of charge and I'll even pay for the shipping. The last temperature zone that I'm gonna be sharing with you today is one that I use when I'm searing a steak or a tri-tip or maybe baking a pizza, but I also like to use it when I'm grilling burgers. Now, I just posted a video to my channel where I show my tips and techniques for grilling the perfect burger. So if you wanna check out that video, I'll put a link to it right up here. And that temperature zone is right at about 550 plus. But a word of warning, if you're using any type of temperature probe like this one here, you wanna make sure you remove those probes from your grill, because those high temps can really damage them. Now here's how I set my grill up. Start by opening the bottom vent on your grill all the way. You want as much airflow as possible. Then pour a full chimney of lit charcoal right in the middle of your grill. Next, spread out that charcoal a little, but not too much. You want the heat concentrated in a small area. And lastly, if I'm searing a steak, I place a skillet with grill marks right on top of the heat. And for this temperature zone, I leave the lid off my grill. Another accessory that I like to use when I'm searing is my Vortex. I'll place it in the middle of my Weber kettle and then I'll fill it with a lit charcoal. It really helps to concentrate all that heat into one spot and really gives those steaks a great sear. Thanks again for joining me in the GNC kitchen. If you can master these three temperature zones on your Weber kettle, you can really grill just about anything. Now y'all go grill something. Yeah, you subscribe turn on that notification bell drop a comment below and come grilling and chilling with Coleman